Hello and welcome to Unlock the Power of Your ERP for Janitorial and Sanitation Distributors. I'm Jason Naxet from Action Associates. And before we get everything started to let you everyone know who's attending, what is going to be going on today, down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a few icons. You can ask a question during the course of the webinar. You can download action resources and request a demo for yourself or for your company to see the action C, um, the Unilog, excuse me, Unilog CX1 platform for yourself. Um, and for our presenter today is Brian Lombardo. Brian has more than 20 years of experience in enterprise business software for ERP distribution companies, including strategy, product, program management, development, operations, and system implementations. Prior to joining Unilog, he served as vice president of development operations for Infor, where he saw oversaw their distribution suite of products and their next generation engagement platform, Rhythm. Much of Brian's time is spent designing, implementing, and growing businesses' capabilities, which include e-commerce, e-procurement, and supply chain connectivity. And now, Brian, if without any further ado, I'm gonna take it away to you, sir. All right, thank you. So welcome, everyone. Uh, like Jason said, um, lifelong person that's been in distribution, you know, for forever. Um, the last 10 years or so have been on the software side of the house, but the 20 years prior to that, I, I worked for a very large uh, industrial distributor. So I've been on both sides of it. I, I know where you guys, uh, you know, some of the operational challenges, some of the productivity tools that you're looking for. And we think we, we've come up with a pretty good solution here to help you out, right? So this, this particular session is gonna be focused around Jansan, right? So, but, it, but Jansan is just really a, a flavor of distribution, but it does have its nuances, right? There, there are certain things about it, such as the content, the products that you guys sell, how do you go to market, your customer base, et cetera, all right? Um, given the fact that Unilog uh, does nothing but distribution, right, uh, and both on the content side and on the commerce side, uh, we have put together a pretty good, interesting suite of tools uh, that can help you as, as you start to engage and want to further grow and scale your business. Okay, so we're going to get into a, a lot more of this in detail here, but what Unilog, you know, we're about 400 plus employees. We're headquartered just outside of Philadelphia in a little town called Wayne, all right? But our goal here really is to provide a frictionless journey, right? So, and what that means is you're gonna have a customer that's gonna have a want, all right? They're gonna need a product. They're gonna need to be able to look at pricing, availability, order statuses, right? So something along those lines, that's gonna be something that's gonna be very, very easy for them to do. Easier than picking up the phone and calling the distributor, right? And that's where these websites come into play because a lot of the stuff that they're looking for can present itself online to make that experience that much more pleasurable, right? In addition to that is the content aspects of it, right? Everybody knows that when you go to a website, that the items that are out there have to present themselves well, right? If you're looking at the particular roll of paper towels, or if you're looking at that mop or that broom or that light bulb, right? That stuff has to present itself well. You need to know exactly what it is, who the manufacturer is, the part number, maybe some of the specs about it, right? So we start talking about that. We start looking at the content that's required at the SKU level. Not only is it the content, but it's gonna be the category structure. All right, and you're gonna hear me use the word taxonomy a lot in this conversation. Taxonomy is the category structure. So in your ERP, whatever it happens to be, right, you're going to have all of your products are gonna be in a category structure, catalog, right? That typically works very, very well for an ERP, a system of record. What is a system of record in an ERP? What is its job? Transaction processing, right? much different when somebody is on their site, when you're looking at trying to have somebody navigate your catalog of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of SKUs to get down to the right one. So you need to have a taxonomy that's gonna work the way a human thinks, not the way a transaction needs to work in terms of creating a purchase order, a sales order, or an invoice, all right? You're gonna need some flexibility on an e-commerce solution. 
not everything is a one size fits all, all right? Everybody's gonna have a little bit of nuances to their business model. You need a, a platform that's gonna be able to be able to be flexible along with you, right? You're gonna need to be able to reach new buyers, right? You don't wanna be have just be held captive to the same customers you had. You want the ability to grow, right? And you're gonna need to find ways to be able to do that, all right? Here's a, a, just a, a few of our customers, right? We're, we have been in the space for quite a while. Uh, I think the company's been around for about 20 years. Um, and we got our start really just doing catalogs, right? Content enrichment, all right? Very, very large catalog. You see genuine parks down there. Some of the other ones you see Orville, right? You'll see things like you've got network distribution. We're going to talk about that for a little bit, right? So a lot of these companies, that they, they have come to us and say, listen, we have a need, all right? We have all of these SKUs, but it's all ERP data. Basically, it's a part number, a manufacturer part number, maybe a very brief, short description, right? But they're looking to either use this data on a website or they're looking to use it to print flyers or catalogs or something along those lines. They need that level of enrichment. Unilog, half of our business is doing exactly that, right? Is creating these catalogs, right? These enriched SKUs. We also have the software aspect of our business, which is being able to take all that wonderful content and be able to create a commerce or an e-commerce capabilities via uh, an integrated solution. Now, if we start taking a look at the Jansan industry in particular, all right, uh, there's a lot of activity going on here, all right, in terms of not only the growth, right, but in terms of the the adoption in e-commerce, right? If you start taking a look at that, right, that first square there, you'll see 60% of the industry within Jansan has adopted some form of e-commerce, right? It could be websites, it could be punch outs. It could be the fact that you're, you're doing an integrated catalog to a particular you know, customer of yours, all right? Look at the growth, all right? When you start looking at the commercial janitorial equipment, all right? 56% increase by 2031, all right? The growth is just gonna keep on going and going and going, all right? And then if you start taking a look at of that, where's the lion's share of it coming from? B2B, our space, right? So all of this stuff together sets itself up well for having the proper tools enabled to allow you to scale, all right? So what do we bring to the table, all right? We bring all of these things that typically a Jan's hand distributor would struggle with, all right? We provide the technical infrastructure. And, and I have a slide that's gonna show you all of what is required to have a robust online e-commerce capability, all right? We have all of that. It's a one size or, or one solution, one stop shop that's got it all. We have the ability to after, offer online order fulfillment, all right? People can actually shop online, they can load up a cart and then they can check out and that will create a sales order right into your ERP, all right? And then also it levels the playing field, all right? You're up against some really big players out there online, all right? There's nothing in the world technically stopping you from being able to compete at that level, all right, with some of these other major, major players, all right? We have to do it better, which we can. We have to do it faster, which we can. And you guys bring to the market your value add, which is gonna be your product and your, your, product and your application expertise. That's, they cannot offer that, all right? So if you start taking a look at from a channel perspective, yes, you can match them. If you start taking a look at a value add pers uh, perspective, all right, you can offer something that these big players cannot. All right, optimizing the value, all right? Enriched product content, it does way more than just present itself well on the on, on site, right? So. People familiar with the term search engine optimization? People go on to Google or Yahoo or, or, or Bing or any of these search engines and you type it. First thing you do is you type in search. You're interested in a product in a market, right? You want to be able to see who are the players within your space, within that market, right? That's where you call search engine optimization or search engine ranking, right? Having a robust catalog can absolutely help you with that. Because now when these search engines go out and they crawl your site, it's going to say, hey, distributor Joe A over here in Seattle, Washington, I see you are an expert or you carry all of these different product lines. You are going to rank way higher 
than somebody that does not have that type of visibility and exposure across their catalog to these crawlers when they do go out there, all right? So having that enriched product content is certainly gonna help you. Having that specific taxonomy, all right? It's not just mapping a catalog to a structure. It's having something specific to the industry in which you play, a Jansan specific taxonomy, all right? You can have custom applications, all right? My items, all right? In your space, there's probably a lot of people that do, go on and start to do reorders, right? I need a case of those paper towels sent every week, all right? We have tools that will allow people to automate that. You can have multi-level approvers, right? Maybe some of your customers have a junior level type of person that can only spend up to X amount of dollars. No problem, right? If he trips that, that, that particular threshold, his boss or his manager will then get an email notification, say, hey, Brian is trying to create an order here of, you know, it's exceeded what he set up for. The manager gets that email. He opens up that link and says, okay, yep, that looks good. Or he can edit the cart and then he can release it from there. All right. So you have all of that. And then you also have the ability to set budgets. All right. All very, very powerful, all very specific to the Jansan space. Okay. Future proofing. All right. Massive consolidation. All right. So in order for us to do that, you need to be able to have a solution that's going to be able to grow and scale with you. You're, you're going to need some way to put campaigns, promotions, maybe set up some training sessions for different types of people, right? Involvement in product, right? Being able to show these, these different clean crews, what's innovative, what's different, what's changing out there. This is where these websites can come into play. They are way more than just an order taking mechanism. All right, they can be used for training and for education. Mobility, all right? How many people don't walk around with a cell phone or something today, all right? Having all of that data at your fingertips, no matter where you are, is very, very powerful. And then that, lastly, the data, the insight. What are people doing? What are they looking at, all right? What are they trying to accomplish in their journey, right? And then being able to take all that and being able to go revisit and figure out, okay, do I need to make some changes here to be able to service my customers? Okay. So accelerating, all right. You want to expand your digital engagement, right? You want to increase your tra site traffic, right? You want to be able to go from your organic search. That's the, what I was talking about in terms of the uh, search engine stuff. You want to grow your revenue, all right. So there's ways that you can absolutely do that on, on websites. People are familiar with, you know, if you've ever been on one of those other leading marketplaces, people have bought this, have also bought that. That's what we call actually linking products together or cross selling. You can start doing upselling, right? So there's ways and tools that you can use on a site to increase your average order value or what they call AOV, all right? So, and the other thing is be able to work, reduce the cost to serve. Every time a customer picks up the phone and they call your location and they ask for price, they ask for availability, they ask for, hey, where's my order, right? The status of that particular order. That is taking time away from your inside sales, your customer service people, right? Those same resources could be directed to more revenue generating, more customer service type of activities. These mundane tasks like this can all be moved online and it's all there. With that level of integration that the websites have now to that system of record, i.e. your ERP, all of that account level of specific information can be surfaced up where people can start to get that information themselves. Okay. We are unique, all right? We are the only solution out there that does offer a content plus commerce uh, offering, all right? We do the enrichment, we do the taxonomy, we create and publish catalogs, but we can also take all of that stuff and we can actually create that and put that into a website that we will deliver to you, okay? We do have a, 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 a catalog today, a repository of, of catalog of items today. In total, it's about 10 million SKUs. Okay, so if you're in the, in the need and you're in distribution, there's a pretty good chance that we have what you already need already enriched. Within your particular industry, Jansan, of that 10 million, we have about 1.3 million already enriched, ready to go. All right, 
In addition to that, we've also built some, some industry group specific. You saw the other one on the network distribution. So we do a partner with a lot of these industry groups because they, they get very specific and say, hey, I want you to enrich these two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 SKUs. We will enrich them. We will give them to those industry groups. And then their members are then able to leverage those. Okay. All right. So this is what I was talking about in terms of the all-in-one. All right. Here is everything that is going to be required for a robust e-commerce experience. All right. So starting from the top left, okay, is going to be what they call a PIM or a product information manager tool. You're going to need some way to manage your catalog, right? Your catalog went from just being ERP data to now being wonderfully enriched, having great images, having attributes, having descriptions, having, like I said, the linked items, the cross-selling, all that stuff together. You're going to need a much more robust item file or catalog tool than your ERP could ever provide. That is what a PIM is. It is part of our solution. I already talked about the content, having the ability to have that enriched content, working and partnering up with a company like us that can provide that rich content, right? So these items present themselves well. You're going to need the shopping cart and the e-commerce functionality, right? So you're going to need all of that type of capabilities. To go along with the large SKU count catalogs that is, is prevalent within distribution, you're going to need a very robust search engine, okay? And we have one. Matter of fact, the search engine that we have, all right, is a best-in-class search engine. We have taken that. We have enhanced it, all right? So it works really well with large SKU count catalogs. We have an electrical distributor that currently has over a million SKUs in their PIM or their catalog, all right? So this thing's dialed in pretty good, all right? It works out really, really well. The next one here, which says CMS, that's a content management system. So for those of you that ever had dabbled in doing websites and stuff, you know you're gonna need a tool set that's gonna allow you to manage the look and feel of your site the colors, the logos, the banners, the static pages, right? You're gonna need some way to manage what people actually see. They call it the user experience on the site. That's a CMS. That's all part of the suite of products uh, that come with our solution. The other part is like I said, it's gonna be the features, okay? You don't have to worry about our solution splitting its roadmap with somebody in healthcare or somebody in retail or somebody in municipality or manufacturing. All we do is distribution. All we do is B2B. So 100% of the roadmap is probably going to be things that somehow you can leverage. So every time there's a release, there's going to be new features, stuff that you can probably take advantage of. Okay? That's at the product level. That is the solution. Okay? Now, below here at the bottom, right, is going to be all of the systems of record. All right? This is within your four walls or hosted with your, your partners, right? your ERP. It could be your, your payment gateway, such as uh, SendPause, if you're running that. It could be your tax engine, if you're at running Avalara or Vertex. Maybe it's your freight companies, FedEx, UPS, Postal Service, right? All of these provide the information into your ERP today that helps your transactions go through. We leverage that same set of systems of record for this online experience. Right in the middle there is a little bit of a, a piece of software that we call CX1 Connect or our middleware. And this is what surfaces up all of that data within those systems of record. So when the users do come on, they can see their pricing. They can see the availability. They can see their orders, their invoices. They can initiate uh, ACH payments, right? They can, in, in some cases, we've done it where they can initiate returns, right? So. You're going to need a lot of the, these features and these functions to work together between the different solutions. Okay. So on the commerce side, all right, it, it, it's no, you know, surprise to anybody that people that are digitally engaged, and, and you guys can all relate to this, right, in your own personal lives, right? So you're going to have the people that are online typically tend to buy more, right? They're online, they're engaged, they go from one product, they start looking at another product, or they're jumping into categories, or you know, maybe it's a repetitive buy or something along those lines. All right, they're gonna buy more. They're gonna they can particularly or, or specifically spend more per transaction. All right. 
and you have ways to do it. You can actually start to manipulate the, your search results. If you're making more margin on this brand, well, when somebody types in a search criteria, let's show that brand first, okay? Because you have an opportunity to make more margin on that, right? And then you have the, the actual, the annual value compared to a traditional customer because of all of those other you know, opportunities that I mentioned earlier. All right. Like I said, all we do is wholesale distribution. All right. So from the in four side of the house, I don't know what happened here. Okay. So it, we support in four is probably the, the ERP that we support the most. I don't know why this is doing this, Jason. All right. It's the in four suite of products such as cloud suite distribution, SXE, fax, A plus. All right. Um, conversely, you'll see that this is weird, all right? That we have the network distribution, we have DPA, United Group, and you, you saw some of those other, other groups there. So I'm not sure why that, that screen was jumping. But anyway, um, we do have the self-service features, all right? That's gonna expose all of that customer data that I was talking about, the pricing, the inventory, their orders, all right? Purchase history, all right? Ability to pay invoices down through ACH, um, they can place orders via credit card. They can create, if you have them on account, they can do it by purchase order, right? Uh, we have the ability to have things such as quick order pad, right? People just, if they just have a punch list of items, they just key those things right in, right? We have a product configurator, all right? That if they, if they have the need, we can actually start to integrate and start opening up the ability for them to configure certain products. If they, if you guys are doing VMI, right? Any one of your customers, we have that as part of our mobile app being able to do VMI. If any of your customers are requiring you to do an integrated catalog, right, which is often referred to as punch out, the site is absolutely set up for that right out of the box, all right? So it's all a matter of understanding your customers and what their requirements are of you. And then we can actually start to see what we can do to embed you deeper within that customer. I already mentioned about the payment options, credit card, purchase order, all right, and then right out of the box, the site is gonna be 100% responsive. It will know the device, it will know the operating system, it will size and render properly, okay? In addition to that, if you so desire, we do have a mobile app. So somebody can go actually go out to either the app store or Google Play or whatever, download the app, and then they can open that, use that. That comes with a different set of tools. I mentioned VMI, it has the ability to do bar, barcode scanning. All right, so there are certain things that come with that mobile app that if it's of value uh, is something that you could absolutely leverage. All right, so we talk about the difference between B2C, B2B, B2C, D2C, which is distributed customer, all right? So the site itself can handle both. It all depends on your business model. So if you are strictly B2B, Obviously, you're going to have people that are going to have to log in because they're going to have to. You're going to have to know who they are, right? So you can actually start to transact or show them the proper information. However, if you are selling direct to consumers, right, you can actually do that as well. We do offer guest checkout. We do offer the ability to process credit cards, right? So in list pricing and things like that. So depending on where you are and what your business model is. The site is 100% configurable to either one or all three of these particular types of, of scenarios. All right, the PIM, we talked about the PIM, right? So the PIM is where you're gonna manage and maintain all of this wonderful content. This is your catalog tool, right? So you're gonna need a means in order for them to manage your product content, your taxonomy, product relationships, um, it's going to allow you to be able to store at the SKU level things like any kind of videos or maybe you have MSDS sheets or you have, you know, installation guides or whatever. All of this stuff that's related to a particular SKU is what is, is, is where the PIM comes in. It allows you to manage all of that. In addition, you have the ability to create customer subsets. What's a subset? Well, let's say you have an agreement with a particular customer. And within that agreement with that particular customer, you are only allowed to sell them five or six or seven categories of products. They don't wanna see your entire catalog. 
all right? Because that's not what you were, you were contracted uh, to uh, sell them. We can actually create a subset, all managed centrally within that master catalog. So when that customer logs in, they're only seeing the items you want them to see. Okay, that's all done within the PIM. All right. So it's one cohesive platform to update and store all of your content. You can syndicate that, right? So if you're doing print work, if you're doing campaigns, promotions, that's the repository. All of your wonderful SKU data is in there. Use it anywhere and everywhere you need to, all right? Allow that to deliver to your internal systems. It can feed back into your ERP. You can actually cut and create exports. So if your customers need to load a catalog into their procurement system, that can actually work that as well. I talked about the fact that we have a JanSan specific taxonomy. All of this has already been mapped out and figured out for you, okay? So, and then we also, like I said, we have the ability to handle your digital assets. So if you're doing things like videos, if you're doing things like, you know, good descript or, or, you know, thick pictures and things like that, right? All of that is, is capable and housed within the pen. All right. The content itself, it delivers. All right. Everybody knows the importance of a content. If you go out onto a website and you just see some generic stuff, you don't see good images, you don't see the specs, right? You're probably not going to see enough for you to actually take that next step. And that next step could be adding it to cart, checking on price and availability and things like that, right? In addition, not having that content flushed out to the proper levels, people aren't going to be able to find it on your site. They're going to put search criteria in there and they're going to come back with no results because they don't have anything to match it up against. That's where the quality of that content comes into play. Okay. So you'll see here, here's a good ex example here. All right. So on the, on the left here, we have, you know, a product that was sent into us and said, okay, well, this is kind of what we have. And then on the right is what we've done with it, all right? So you can see what I mean when we start talking about content enrichment. We've taken a SKU that had an image, all right? Didn't really have any description to it. Maybe it had just a manufacturer part number. But if you take a look at what it's been transformed into, there's the robust description. There's the unit of measure. There's all the specs, the features. And if you look down there, there's a document, a PDF that somebody can open up on it, all right? way more information there way more where they can actually start to figure out make a decision yes this is the product i'm interested in all right it helps people find your stuff all right this is the seo piece okay so as your catalog is enriched now these search engines know exactly who you are and what you sell right so when somebody does type in something even generic as a part number you are going to come up is a particular vendor or a specific vendor for that particular item. Perfect example is right here. Here's a, a part number, 6101767, and look at that, Hill and Marks is coming up first, all right? That's not by accident, okay? That's the power of content right there, okay? Like I said, the other thing, it's gonna help people be able to find products on your site. They start going in there and they start keying in some criteria, as vague as it may be, right? You can have keywords associated, industry terms associated with a particular product. So when they do come onto the site and they start keying this stuff in, it can automatically within that PIM, that same wonderful tool, has all of these keywords, it has these product associations. Now all of a sudden these things mean something because they're mapped to an item, getting the user to what they want, right? That's all part of what we're trying to solve for. Content is king, okay? All right, good content informs the customer, shows off your expertise, all right? This was a perfect example before. If you go to a, a supplier site and they have something like this, right, you're probably looking and say, you know what? These guys have, their, have it together, right? They obviously know what they're doing. They know their products, right? They know their applications, right? So this comes off as these guys being, and these guys could be just a, I mean, they're not. Hill & Marks is a good, nice size company, but they could be just a pure play e-com company, but they're gonna come off as, as, as a major player. Back to my point about being able to level the playing field against some of these bigger marketplaces that are out there, all right? And again, once they have all this information, now they have enough information to take the next step, which is ultimately the, the big one, and that would be able to add it to cart, right? This is the revenue driver. 
all started with the content. Okay. The other thing you can see is here is like when you start to look about your average order value. All right. So in this case, I know we're, we're showing some HVAC here, but you know, if you happen to be a technician, right. And you're looking at this stuff and say, okay, well, geez, that's great. But you're right. I do need a pair of safety glasses, or maybe I need one of these masks or something along those lines. Right. Or maybe in, in the HVAC where you need a particular line set or a pad or, or, you know, in which to put all this equipment on. Right. So you can start to see where you start stringing this stuff together. And now what started off as being, I was just looking for one SKU. He's got two, three, four, five complementary products all being added to the cart, increasing your sales, your revenue. Okay. Connect, like I said, the connect is that middleware piece. All right. This is what this is where the magic happens. This is where it takes all of that data within all these different disparate systems, whether it's your ERP or your tax engine or your freight engine, right? Um, and then it allows that stuff to surface up and become part of that user experience, right? Is the piece that allows for the customer information to be shared, right? That particular pricing for that particular customer, those particular orders for that particular customer, the inventory at that particular location that is assigned to that customer. All of that is part of what we talk about when we talk about the, the connectivity or that, that middle layer there, okay? All right, so connected commerce, like I said, experience matters. This is all we do, right? So it's distribution, it's knowing your ERPs because you have to know how to integrate to them. It's knowing your content, it's having experience in the industries in which you pay, play. All of these come together for a winning solution for the industries and the customers that you uh, address, okay? 360 degree view of the customer. We have a multitude of ERPs and point of sales, all right? Um, for the most part, you know, we're talking about an N4 here today, but there, there are others. We are everywhere where our distributors are, right? Different multiple payment gateways. I, I rattled off send pause because that's pretty popular within the N4 world. But, you know, there's many, many more that are out there that we support, all right? All the shipping and delivery tools, any, we, you know, if you integrate with like MailChimp or if you integrate with a CRM or any of the social media applications, right? There's ways that we can use plugins for that. It blogs, for instance, all right? That's another one, all right? We, we talked about product configurators, all right? If you have the need for a configuration of some of your products, right? And be able to publish content out to different marketplaces, all right? Again, you're sitting on the repository of data. You can syndicate and publish that to anywhere it needs to go. Okay, so what should you be asking yourself? Am I meeting my customers where they are? Are they online? Are they looking to do more online? Are they looking for an integrated catalog? So are you where your customers are? Are you looking to expand your sales footprint? Today you have maybe geographic territory. Maybe you have a certain customer base. Maybe you would like to get outside of that, all right? There's nothing preventing you from an online presence from going outside of what you're currently doing with your brick and mortar. All right. Do you have the commerce tools and features that your customers want? That's the feature set, right? That's the mobility part of it. All right. So having all of that stuff available so they can leverage that to make their life easier. All right. Is your competition eating away at your market share? Do they have some of this stuff that you don't? All right. Maybe they're coming in as you know, the leader in the space, because now they're offering things that maybe you don't, maybe you've been just, it's been, you have wanted to make this decision and invest in this kind of technology, but you haven't, but your competitors have. And now your customers are saying, Hey, you know, you know, this guy over here is doing X, Y, and Z. Right. So make sure you keep an eye on it. Right. What can I do to keep my customer service overhead in check? This is what we're talking about. The total cost to serve. Move more of this stuff online. Have them go out there, check pricing and availability. Have them go out there and get copies of their invoices or look at their orders, right? It's gonna take a lot of pressure off of your inside sales and your customer service people, right? Keep that overhead in check. You can grow revenue with keeping your customer service, you know, uh, cost in check, all right? Is your product content e-commerce ready? That's a very simple question to ask. You know your quality of your content. You can go into your ERP today. You can look at your website today. 
Does it have good images? Does it have a good description? If you weren't you, and you were one of your customers looking at a particular item, a particular SKU, does it have enough in there for the customer to be able to take that next step, whether it's checking on price and availability? Can he find it on the site because it's got enough of that content, right? Is there enough there for him to be able to place the item into the cart? Is there enough there for him to start adding additional items to that, complementary products, right? Should you expand your offering? There's nothing preventing you from adding additional items to your 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 uh, your website, right? Even though you may not have them in stock, you can leverage your vendors and do drop ship. Okay, we mentioned we have over a million SKUs in Jansan already enriched. Start figuring out which ones of these you might be able to drop ship from directly from your manufacturers, right, or your suppliers, and let's get them out on the site. They don't necessarily have to be stuff on your shelf. All right. So you can expand your offerings very easily. All right. It's not a strategy today. All right. I showed you the stats on where the market, where the industries are within Jansan. It is not just a strategy. It is a necessity. Okay. You know, a lot of this I already talked about, the fact that we do sell through a multitude of industries, you know, Jansan being one of our leading ones. All right. You can increase your customer engagement, elevate your ability to sell drive brand awareness, all right? Just the fact that you're gonna be out there and you're gonna have this wonderful looking site, you're running promotions, you're emailing them, all right? Uh, enhance your operational efficiency by lowering your total cost to serve, right? Or increasing your productivity, all wonderful things, all right? So with that, I'm gonna stop here, all right? I think I have a, a few minutes and then we're gonna see if we can have some questions and then we can go from there. All right. Yeah, I got a couple questions. Um, what would be or could be the implications if we were to upgrade our ERP in the future? Ah, good question. So th the good news is once your site is integrated into an ERP, there's a defined set of what they call APIs. Okay. Now, if you stick within the Infor family, right, and let's say you're you're going from like SXE to CSD or FAX to CSD or A plus to CSD, all right? N4 hasn't changed their APIs all that much, all right? So there'll be a little bit of effort there, all right? But it's not going to be monumental, all right? A lot of it is just going to be making sure that the, it's, it's going to be more testing than anything. There could be a couple adjustments needed here or there, but we are not by no means talking a re-implementation of a site, all right? Just a little bit of effort to make sure that the new way we take the existing site, we point it to the new ERP and we do a series of testing, make whatever adjustments need to be and you're up and running. That's great. Um, what is the average time to get a new site live? That's a, that I get asked this a lot. So I, I used to run delivery here at Unilog and, and I would say to be safe, I would plan on budget for six months, okay? Um, it sounds like a lot, and it probably is, but I can tell you right now, things don't always go as planned. You're gonna run into a vacation, you're gonna run into holidays, right? You know, where things get tripped up is on design, right? Because now all of a sudden, everybody in your company wants to have an opinion on, on how the homepage should look. So the homepage, you know, if that's something that should take like maybe a couple of days to figure out, next thing you know, that's taking a couple of weeks, right? Because now all of a sudden you're bringing in an outside design firm or whatever. So just to budget, to be safe, plan on six months, good chance it's going to come in earlier. All right. Uh, one more question. We have, already we have already enriched most of our products. Can we leverage that with your solution? Oh, absolutely. So what we do is we have a spec all right, that pin that I was telling you about, right? And it says, okay, these are the data elements that we need. So if you already have it, that's fine. We'll take all that, we map that to the spec, and then we would just import it directly right into the pin and away you go. All right, that was about it for questions. A um, little bit about action, what makes us unique. We're the largest in for distribution partner in North America. We partner with leading technology providers like Unilog to transform business operations for action customers, deliver high value consultative services, addressing business process improvements, including industry best practices 
and innovative technology solutions for, info, for ERP implementations. Our proprietary lean implementation process ensures a successful go live. Our company, um, all, over 220 employees and more than 6,500 customers, we're a national ERP reseller for software and IT infrastructure provider, focused on the architectural engineering and construction, real estate, distribution, and manufacturing industries. Two company-owned data centers, top 20 VAR in North America, and a 2023 top workplace award. Um, for everyone who's still attending, uh, thank you for everyone who attended. Um, you here you'll see a QR code you can go ahead and scan with your mobile device that'll take you to our um, Jansan um, janitorial sanitation distribution landing page you can find info case studies webinars invites and um, other informational collateral you can view at your own uh, um, at your own regard once again I'm Jason Naxet from Action Associates here in Maumee Ohio thank you Brian Labardo for this wonderful presentation I and we will see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Take care.